So My Children, My Africa by Atul Fugard is a thought-provoking play. It's set in apartheid-era South Africa, just constantly highlighting the racial divide between black and white South Africans. And it explores themes of education, youth activism, and just generational conflict. And the story, it follows Mr. M, who unfortunately has a, a tragic end, he does pass. He's a passionate and idealistic black teacher who believes in peaceful change through education. Peaceful change, just like Mahatma Gandhi did it, Satyagraha. Peace above all else through education. And two students. Tommy, he's a very young, gifted black student who's torn between loyalty to his teacher and the revolutionary youth movement. Revolutionary? Well, he doesn't want a peaceful solution to this. He wants to meet it with perhaps a bit of violence, some military-esque tactics. Meet fire with fire and then enter Isabel, enter Isabel his uh, debate partner, a white student from a privileged background who initially connects with Tommy through a school debate and they become friends. Maybe they have a little something something going on between them like uh, like Rachel and Zia. As uh, political tensions escalate, I mean, as you would imagine, Sharpeville massacre, Soweto uprising, these mass human right violations upon black South Africans orchestrated by the minority white government. Tommy chooses to join the anti-apartheid struggle, the fight for freedom and liberation, and completely rejects his teacher's non-violent approach. Now, their differing ideologies, one being more passive, one being a bit more proactive, violent, it leads to tragic consequences when Mr. M is actually killed by activists who view him as a collaborator with the white government. Now, Adolf Fugard's play, it, it highlights the complexities of resistance under the apartheid regime and painful choices faced by young people. Now, even though Isabel is white, she's not a sympathizer with apartheid. She sees the wrongdoings committed by the apartheid government, by the apartheid regime. And it is a very moving reflection on the cost of freedom, the power of education. Like Mandela said, um, education has the power to change the nation, the power to change so many lives. And this intergenerational struggle I mean, Mr. M is considerably older, right? He's part of a different generation versus his students. The same battles he has fought, or while well, not fought because he is quite passive in his approach, his nonviolent approach, Tommy is now fighting. And there's an unlikely partnership here because the white student from an affluent school, um, Isabel Dyson, she wins the debate. And impressed by the whole intellectual connection between Tommy and Isabel, Mr. M actually brings them together as a team for a larger English literature comp competition. And this generational political divide is even further strengthened. So as the students prepare, their friendship blossoms, but their different worlds become ever so apparent. Isabel reeks of, of privilege. She's got access to all these resources and facilities, but Tommy doesn't. And when Tommy joins the boycott, Mr. M, desperate to stop the, the madness of it all and protect his students, he provides information to the white police about the boycotting students. So he was to an extent, a collaborator. And Tommy's comrades, they retaliate, and a mob attacks Zolile High School, intending to kill Mr. M. Because how dare you collaborate with the white man? Tommy tries to help him escape, but Mr. M is killed. And Tommy, implicated in the violence, he flees to join the struggle abroad. So Tommy is actually sent into exile. And in the aftermath, Isabel visits a very significant location for Mr. M, uh, promising to honor his memory by using her life to just, well, foster understanding, connection, and symbolizing a fragile hope for more than just a future. So, yeah, a little bit of an audiobook here that I'm giving. And all these themes, education versus violence, the uh, impact of apartheid, loyalty and betrayal, a generational divide, all of these are apparent in My Children, My Africa. Absolutely beautiful, stunning book, just highlighting marginalized communities in South Africa during the apartheid era, but have during the apartheid era, but have things actually changed for the common black man in South Africa? Yes, things have definitely improved over the last 20 or 30 years. For sure. There is no heavy racial legislation that is prejudiced against previously uh, discriminated communities. We have AA, affirmative action policies in place, but unfortunately uh, that only benefits a small population in South Africa. 
And as usual, um, a global thing, our fat cat politicians, they line their own pockets with taxpayer money instead of pushing it into more governmental schemes. So even after this anti-apartheid struggle where so many lives were lost, our government um, has failed to provide for, well, just people of color. So yeah, it is very, very painful. The situation, it has improved, but not at the rate you'd want it to. I mean, Santon, Alexandra, Belito, Shakas Kral, Stellenbosch, Kayamandi, for every stunning suburb in the country, there is a township, a settlement that is the labor force in that suburb. So My Children, My Africa, stunning book, highlights the gross atrocities committed by the apartheid government. Have things changed? Yes. But they really, really need to improve a bit more. I hope and pray at my tender age of 24 in the next 50, 60 years, I'll see an equal South Africa where the daughter of a black family born in a township has the equal opportunity as the son of a white family who was born in a suburb. I really hope to see something like that and unity hand in hand, without violence, without racism, without all of that. Because, well, Madiba saw it. The only way forward in South Africa is through reconciliation and forgiveness. If you want to choose violence, well, we'll just go the same way as many African countries did in a civil war. Madiba prevented us from heading into civil war. He chose forgiveness above all else. And, well, that is why... He's such a revered figure. Some of you may call him the goat, and I definitely agree. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the summary, and all the best for your examinations. Good luck. I wish you the very best. Bye.